questions. This is Mr. Clifford. Welcome to Econ Movies. Today we're going to look at the economics in Anchorman. It's Channel 4 News at 6 o'clock. We're going to jump back into the study of microeconomics, and this is basically the decision making of individuals and firms. So let's make a graph that will help us with our decision making. Ladies and gentlemen, can I please have your attention? I've just been handed an urgent and horrifying news story. Cannonball! Here's a graph for doing cannonballs in a party. I know it's a little silly, but it's going to help us understand the idea of marginal analysis and efficiency. The marginal benefit curve for doing cannonballs is downward sloping. This is because of the law of diminishing marginal utility. As you continue to do something, you're going to get less and less additional satisfaction from each time you do it. We've been coming to the same party for 12 years now, and in no way is that depressing. <laughs> <laughs> this law explains a lot of human behavior, and it's the reason why jokes aren't perpetually funny. <laughs> we are laughing. <laughs> and we are very good friends. <laughs> good buddies sharing a special moment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't say anything wrong. You know, just let it happen. <laughs> laughing and enjoying our friendship. And someday we'll look back on this with much fondness. <laughs> yeah. Uh. The point is, the marginal benefit for doing cannonballs in a pool is downward sloping. The marginal cost curve for doing cannonballs is upward sloping. Wait, there's no cost for jumping into a pool. Well, actually, there is a cost, your opportunity cost. If you only do one or two cannonballs, the opportunity cost is still really low because you can still mingle and talk to people at the party. You'll still have time to make a move on the ladies. But if you do 100 cannonballs, you won't have any time to actually enjoy the party. And all the ladies will think that you're totally crazy. Wait, 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 wait. I... The point is, the marginal cost of doing cannonballs is upward sloping. So if you're trying to make the best decision, how many cannonballs do you do? Well, where the marginal benefit hits the marginal cost. So right here is the optimal or efficient number of cannonballs that you should do. If you do any cannonballs above this quantity, the additional cost is greater than the additional benefit. Now this idea of marginal analysis is the basis of all of microeconomics. You're going to see this concept over and over and over again. For example, let's go back and look at supply and demand. The demand curve shows the marginal benefit to consumers and their willingness to pay for lamps. I love lamp. Do you really love the lamp or are you just saying it because you saw it? The supply curve represents the marginal cost of the firms that produce lamps. The free market will produce an equilibrium quantity where supply equals demand, and that's the efficient or the socially optimal quantity of lamps. I love lamp. I love lamp. But sometimes the free market makes mistakes. That's called a market failure. Take a look at this great example. She gets a special cologne. It's called Panther by Odeon. It's illegal in nine countries. Yep. Yeah. It's made with bits of real panther, so you know it's good. Ooh, it's a formidable scent. <laughs> well, let's go see if we can make this little kitty purr. Hey, sweet cheeks. Got an invite I'd like to extend your way. Oh my God. What is that smell? Oh. That's the smell of desire, my lady. Oh God, no, it smells like, like a used diaper filled with Indian food. Oh, excuse me. You know, desire smells like that to some people. What is that? It smells like a turd covered in burnt hair. Oh. This cologne is clearly an example of a market failure called a negative externality. The quantity that would be produced by the free market is wrong because there's an external cost to other people. The free market would produce with a marginal benefit, it's the marginal private cost. But it ignores the additional cost to other people that results in a higher marginal social cost. The efficient or socially optimal quantity is right here where the marginal social benefit hits the marginal social cost. So the free market is producing way too much of this cologne. The area of this inefficiency is called dead weight loss. So what's the solution? The government can step in and either tax the producers of this cologne, or they can just ban it. That's why it's already illegal in nine countries. This is worse than the time the raccoon got in the copier. Yeah. The general concept that the government should step in anytime there's a negative side effect on society or individuals is justification for almost everything the government does. Whether it's taxing cigarettes, giving tickets to people that litter, or ending gang fights. These are all things that have additional costs to society, and so the government steps in to stop it. Policia! 
<laughs> How about that? <laughs> Sometimes there's external benefits to society. This is called a positive externality. A great example is education. If the free market was solely in charge of educating our youth and producing schools, they'd be producing where the marginal cost hits the marginal private benefit. Schools would be underproduced and the result would be dead weight loss. Just imagine what society would look like. I don't know what we're yelling about! The consumers of education would factor in the benefit to themselves and would ignore the additional benefit of a more educated society. <laughs> yes, good one. The free market is going to produce this quantity, but the quantity society actually wants is right here. Again, the result will be deadweight loss and a strong justification for government-funded public education. Now, don't get me wrong. Free markets are awesome, but sometimes they fail to provide what society wants, and this is called a market failure. Reporting for Channel 4 News, this is Mr. Clifford. Back to you, Ron. Great story. Compelling and rich.